This is Songs on Fire, the show where I trade songs and stories with some of my favorite artists and good friends right from my backyard. My name is Ben Kunder. I'm a singer-songwriter, and I love to talk to other singer-songwriters. Today's special guest is Sarah McDougall. All right. Oh, oh, oh. 
and told me how hard this would be like learning how to swim by being thrown in wake up early before the day comes I want to go outside and bury all Searching for the stranger You are calling me back home Thought I went looking for salvation I just wanted to be me thinking if I pick up and will you remember me your clothes are lying out on the pavement kids ride their bikes so fast your name Searching for the stranger You were calling me back home Thought I went looking for salvation I just wanted to be Sarah. Yes. I'm so excited to have you on my show. Um, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to have you here. We've experienced a lot together as friends and through music. We've written songs together and recorded together, toured in Canada and the States and Europe. And um, I want to start by talking about your record, Greatest Ones Alive, because it's the 10 year anniversary. Yes. And that's when I, when I met you, was after that record came out. And those songs were the first songs that I connected with. Um, so let's talk about that. How does it feel, mm -hmm. thinking about that record, um, what it means to you, what it meant to you then to make that record and what it means to you now Huh. Um, first of all, it's pretty crazy that it's been 10 years. Yeah. Um, back then, um, it meant pretty much everything. Um, I 
when I wrote most of those songs, I was homeless. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'd just gone through a breakup, and uh, I was trying to go on tour all the time because I didn't have like a home home. And um, it's just like starting to give music a go. And, uh, and it was completely fundraised by fans. So I, I was on tour and I would sell the like, pre-sales of that record until I had enough money to, to make, make the record. That's amazing. And um, I ended up getting like, like $12,000 together or something like that. And, uh, and then I uh, went to, what's that called? Bunker Studios, I think, in North Vancouver. Okay. And I worked with them with Matt, who's, uh, he's actually part of, um, um, <laughs> what is their name? Uh, the harpoonist and axe murderer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's the uh, axe murderer in that band. And, uh, and uh, we basically just like the two of us worked on it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it's a so really special record to me. Did you write those songs when you were... So obviously you did the touring to fundraise for the record, but the songs mm -hmm. were written before then, right? Some of them. Some of them. Yeah, some of them were written and... Like um, the framework of the record was... Exactly, was so I'd play the songs. Yeah. And then I'd be like, I don't have any money, I'm homeless. <laughs> and, and is this when you uh, were... If you want to hear these songs on a record... Then yeah. Is this when you were in Whitehorse? No, I hadn't moved you there hadn't yet. You hadn't moved there yet? No. So, so... So I was like in between Vancouver and Whitehorse. Okay. But I was... I, it was like a year when I didn't have a home. Yeah. Um, where I was just touring, basically. So I'm interested then to know which songs... I mean, I know... There are some I know were written in Whitehorse. But which songs were it sort of started that process for, for Greatest Ones Alive? Which songs are like BC songs? Which songs are White Horse songs? Oh, I see. Um, Permafrost yeah. is a White Horse song. And uh, We're All Gonna Blow Away is a White Horse song. Mm -hmm. The rest are uh, BC songs, I guess. Okay, <laughs> cool. Or Sweden, Sweden songs. There's a couple of Sweden songs in yeah. there too. One okay. Norway song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's like geographical record. Yeah. 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 That's cool. A lot of them were written like going for walks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely like a very like I'm going for a walk and and then and then uh, I'd get a melody together. Um, I almost feel like you can hear that in like it's sort of like mid-tempo like walking yeah, the <laughs> rhythm grooves, in the a grooves way. have certainly the grooves on that record certainly have like a movement like a shuffle like yeah. You can, yeah yeah i feel that definitely okay so that was 10 years ago when you look back at that process of how you wrote then and now how you create because you came to canada from sweden right to go to school for engineering right production uh composition for composition and, and uh engineering okay yeah. okay um and now you're producing and mm -hmm. doing a lot of that in the work that you do now do you feel like that has carried through with you like all, all the way since you were in school in terms of how you how you approach songwriting is it always from uh you know, compositional um, production viewpoint, or was there a break and now you've just been coming back into that production world? Um, I actually think I went into composition and production mainly just to be able to like produce and compose my own songs and to be able to talk to musicians um, because I al always like had a vision in my head of what I wanted something to be. 
Yeah. Um, but I felt like I didn't have the language and I didn't have the knowledge like You're so smart. when I was younger. Yeah, that's such a beautiful uh, thing. It's such a practical. Yeah, that's totally why I started. Yeah. And because um, I was never like interested in really in like composing for chamber orchestras sure. or although I'm kind of I'm interested in that now just from like doing it yeah. but but my main um, my main motivation was to be able to like arrange my own music and and communicate and, uh, yeah communicate yeah because I wasn't a trained musician like I was yeah. just like totally self-taught and um, and started writing songs so early that that was like always my main and do you feel like thing. that do you feel like that actually allowed that for you that did create that um, opportunity for you to communicate in the future like it was a good mm -hmm. idea it actually worked absolutely yeah yeah definitely. that's so interesting I mean I hope that uh, if anybody's watching this that's starting out Mm -hmm. Because I, you know, you, I understand exactly what you're saying and wish I had that practical approach when I started because a lot of the way you communicate, I remember making my first record and it's all about feeling and, yeah. and metaphorical emotions, you know, like you want the symbols to sound like sugar plum fairies dancing or something, you know, as opposed to actually being able to approach it with you know, proper terminology and get your point across. Mm -hmm. And only now am I able to envision that and communicate that just from experience and watching. Yeah. yeah. Which is good also, but... I mean, it's like a lifetime learning for... Yes. For everyone. Like, um, for me, it was just the only way that I could do it because I came from Sweden where there was like only an electronic music scene not a focus on songwriting at all like yeah. there there wasn't like a production school in sight like, mm -hmm. um so i just kind of had to go and seek that out and what made you decide vancouver uh when i was a teenager i was like really into janice joplin mm -hmm. and 60s music yeah <laughs> So I really wanted to go to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. So I was looking at schools there, um, but it was way too expensive. Yeah. And then I was like, well, I'm Canadian, so I should go to Vancouver instead. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, ended up at Simon Fraser University. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you, when you were in BC, did you end up getting out to San Francisco? Uh, yeah, I did once. Took a little while. My mom's cousin lived there. Okay. So I went and visited him. Um, but yeah, now that you say it, I, I wish I, you know, I need to go there again. You gotta go to San Francisco. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Next tour, you gotta put one of those San Francisco on the map. Yeah. Make it happen. But I did all the things like I went to, you know, the City Lights bookstore and I went yeah. and like picked up a bunch of beatnik poetry and Yes. You know. Beautiful. Well, Hate Ashbury and all that stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I wanna I wanna go back to Greatest Ones Alive for a second. Sure. You probably know that that Permafrost was maybe like my one of my favorite songs. Maybe one of my favorite songs you've written, but also just, it's in there as one of my favorite songs in general. Um, and it has a very specific uh, story. Mm -hmm. And one of the pleasures that I had when we were touring together was hearing you, you know, lead into that um, song. So uh, I'm hoping you'll tell that story now because yeah. people may not have heard it. And then I would, like to hear about you know any other um, songs that maybe I don't know about that you've written that are written from 
very specific situations like that. Hmm. Um, I guess I'll start with the start story. With, yeah, yeah. You're not sick of it yet? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I haven't heard it in a few years. <laughs> That's true. Maybe on like show 20 I was sick of it, but yeah. I haven't heard it in two or three years, so. Uh, do I remember it? Um, well, I just moved to Whitehorse. Yeah. And I was living in this cabin in the woods. And, uh, well, I was house sitting at Cabin in the Woods for about a month. And it was really, really cold. I was minus 40. My tires became square on my car. And, um, yeah, that's a real thing. It is a real thing. It was the first time I experienced that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was going through a heartbreak for sure. And um, this cabin was like just a one bedroom, but like with no kitchen, no, no running water, no toilet, nothing. So it just had this outhouse about 50 meters away and uh, you kind of had to go like almost into the woods to get to it so there was a sensor light outside the cabin that kept going off so I started like thinking like there must be huge animals yeah. around here and we're in the Yukon it was it was November but um, I'd gone to the corner store and I heard two ladies say that there was a bear uh, that had been spotted the day before in Goldenhorn, which was where I was. And uh, so I was super paranoid and uh, I didn't want to go to the outhouse. So I tried to just not drink any water. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I became quite dehydrated. And uh, and the song is kind of inspired by cold and dark and dehydration. Yeah. So dehydrated that you started to hallucinate I and did. Uh, allowed you to <laughs> write. A exactly. Song. Yeah. Exactly. It allowed me to like tap into something. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a, a perfect story for. A little fireside, mm -hmm. uh, little yeah. fireside chat. It actually kind of reminds me of Whitehorse in a way. Like, I just remember like that spot. There was a hot tub. Yeah. And uh, every night I'd go in the hot tub and look up at the stars, and there were like always so many stars and northern lights, and yeah, just like. Yeah, if you can't find inspiration there, there then. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to find it? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, everyone finds inspiration in different Of ways. course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it is pretty inspiring up yeah. there. Yeah. Those were, those were definitely some of my favorite. I could actually listen to that story every, every night at shows. Because yeah. I knew then we were going to sing it together. Yeah. Really, like highlight of my. Nice. Of my. Uh, That's nice to know. I don't yeah. think you ever told me that. Well, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you know, people often want to know what a song is about, which is kind of an annoying question. Mm -hmm. um, more like, is there something like that that inspired a song? that was really developed by the environment you were in or mm. a specific feeling. Mm -hmm. And if there is something that's interesting to share, mm -hmm. it, you know, if there isn't, then that's fine too. One that comes to mind, and it's also a Yukon one, mm -hmm. um, Empire. Yeah. That one came from um, being on a helicopter because I, I played at the Outland Music Festival and they, um, every year they like pick a couple of local musicians and a couple of um, out-of-town musicians mm -hmm. to go on a helicopter ride 
uh, to the glacier. And, uh, and so I went on this helicopter ride and, um, and I think just like the environment, just like seeing the world from above in that way, um, really inspired my song Empire. And actually my whole last record sort of came from, like it originated from that feeling of yeah. like, uh, kind of looking down at the world and also like looking up and just like, yeah, it's hard to describe, but, but yeah. kind of like zooming out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Getting a bird's eye view or taking it all in. Yeah. 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 That's cool. And also like, just like realizing how like small we are and, and uh, yeah, just like that, that moment of when you're like kind of in it, you know? How quickly after the helicopter ride did you write Empire? <sighs> or how uh, soon after did the idea come for the song? I think very soon, like, um, like the song was already, it was already starting in yeah. the helicopter. Yeah. But, but like actually writing it was maybe like the next week or something, mm -hmm. but yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Those are the best. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the best, aren't they? I also had one song, um, that I never released, but it was like one of my first songs um, that totally came to me in a dream. Yeah. Like I woke up and I just wrote down the whole song and it was like 10 verses. <laughs> it was like an AAA <laughs> um, yeah. format. Yeah. And it was so long. And it's like, when I l look at it now, I'm, s I'm still like in awe that I did that. Cause I, uh, yeah. I just, I actually like think it's really good. <laughs> I have a song also that I wrote. Really? Yeah, it was just actually, uh, there was some, maybe it was on Facebook or somewhere, somebody asked, said I wrote a song in a dream, and then yeah. a bunch of songwriters were like, well, I did that once, or that happened. Yeah, I, I only song. did it once. Yeah. Also. Maybe it's like a thing that you just like, yeah, it, it's only meant life. to happen once. It's on, uh, <laughs> it's, on a, a, it's on a hidden record, a secret record from 2000. Oh, that first record. On that first record from 2008. <laughs> um, Hidden record. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the secret MySpace record. Uh, but yeah, also I woke up and just, the, not just the lyrics, but the melody, everything was yeah. already decided. Same, yeah. And it was completed. Like there yeah. was no editing, there was no, it was a pretty incredible, and it might, it was a very, I thought, and the few people that followed me at the time on MySpace thought it was a very good song. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to hear that song. I know. I should dig it out at some point. Yeah. And um, and play it because I have the demo somewhere because I recorded it um, in a studio and everything. Oh wow! <laughs> you I definitely just never, should. Uh, it was just like a demo. But. There's something to be said. We were talking about this earlier before we started shooting about. Um, I was talking about, you know, being embarrassed by some unreleased things or some old things and not being sure about sharing them. And uh, my pal Jim Guthrie, who was on an earlier episode, was puts, that's how he started his career, was by recording everything, like field journaling, yeah. every sound, every song, every, and just putting it out, mm -hmm. which was the time, you know, mixtapes, it's a little different now. Although maybe it's coming back, reverting back to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the accessibility of home recording. Yep. But you know, maybe you just need to like have a look at those demos and mix them and yeah. put them on your band camp or on whatever. Let me. It was only a song. That, give me that music. It was the only song my grandma would listen to for my demo tape, because um, she, I think the second song on the on the CD. Uh, this was like a home burnt CD, but yeah. uh, the second song had a swear word in it. Yeah. I think it had a fuck in it. Yeah. 
And um, so she just had the first song on repeat. <laughs> Couldn't get past. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so funny. That's amazing. But it was always in her CD player. She like never played anything else. That's just that best. one song. <laughs> what are the things that you've taken from that process or mm -hmm. that you still do? What have you, what have, how have you grown in the way you make records now? Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I has, think has like, the process shifted. That yeah. Much? Well, the greatest ones alive was just like mostly just me and Matt building, and then like kind of like how you made your last record, like yeah. you know, getting some guests in, but but mostly it was the two of us. Um, and then on my next record, Grand Canyon, I really wanted to have it be like more of a band yeah. feeling. Um, and, uh, and then my last record, All the Hours, I have left to tell you anything, which is the longest name ever, um, was kind of a hybrid of the two, I think. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a band record, but not. And, um, and, uh, and now... I've mostly just been working alone on my new songs because um, because I've had the luxury, sort of, uh, because of COVID, yeah. to just like spend a lot of time in my studio and just try stuff out and experiment and, and um, yeah. So I think like I think with every record, like I want to try something new. Like yeah. I I'm not super I don't look back that much mm -hmm. I just kind of like get excited about something and then I just follow that and um, and that's kind of my my process so know. what are you excited about right now um, I'm really excited about rhythms yeah. and good melodies and good melodies I've always been excited about sure. but maybe slightly different melodies trying new things a little bit but also kind of the same thing um, I like I think what most excites me is like the simple and the complex together yeah that's that's what I like really get off on right now yeah um, that's kind of the the hardest and the most beautiful is being able to access simplicity but have it yeah. be something nobody's ever heard before yeah you know yeah I find most artists most songwriters most bands try very hard when they're starting out try very hard in general to create something unique and interesting mm -hmm. myself included but you're really just striving for simplicity, mm -hmm. you know. So how are you? How are you approaching that now? How are you finding? What is your approach to find those rhythms and those melodies that? I feel like right now I'm kind of like in an experimental phase in a way, um, but I've delved more into. Um, some drum machines mm -hmm. and uh, kind of trying to create that way. Um, Are you allowing the the sounds and the rhythms to lead, like direct the song and you'll write lyrics afterwards? Is that kind of the direction you're going in now? Sometimes I have, um, but sometimes, um, sometimes it starts with the lyrics. Yeah, it kind of depends. Yeah. But I'm I'm doing that. I think I'm doing that more than I was before. Yeah. Uh, because before it was always like like I'd go for a walk, melody and lyrics would come kind of at the same time, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'd kind of hear a rhythm in my head. But that was always kind of the last thing that would come. And uh, and that approach is just slightly shifted just because I'm 
my interest right now is is uh creating sounds creating rhythms yeah yeah i'm having lots of fun yeah, yeah. i mean that's what it's about right yeah and i'm trying to have fun with it and trying to like be i don't know there's something to be said about like being new at something and kind of being bad at it yeah <laughs> no of course and that's when like the most exciting things happen yeah um so that's kind of where i'm at right now yeah. and we'll see if if uh you know how exciting it is but but That's i'm excited okay. i mean <laughs> i think you and i both got you know our op1 since around the same time yeah and a lot of that for me was the same with piano playing is like i felt like i was recreating the same stories on my guitar mm -hmm. and with the piano with synths with drum machine sounds all of a sudden you're you're making mistakes and discovering. Yeah. Usually by making, for me, it's usually by making mistakes, I'm discovering something mm -hmm. new that I haven't heard before or that I haven't created before. Yeah. So it's a really interesting approach. And even though a sound may exist already, it may be new to you, you know? And to be honest, like, I don't really care if it's new. Sure. Uh, like, to me, it's like, as long as I'm into it, you know? Yeah that's what matters to me um and uh yeah i think i just got a little bored with my guitar and um and uh, i haven't played it that much but playing it tonight i'm like i need to play more again yes yeah. now i now i'm actually starting to miss it which is exciting yeah it's yeah. beautiful yeah i was feeling the same i during the pandemic I didn't touch it for like three or four months. Yeah. And I was finding it was like making me sad mm -hmm. sometimes, you know? And yeah. uh, <laughs> the piano and going into my rehearsal space and working with my synth and learning how to record in different ways mm -hmm. and harmonizing with myself, I was just finding uh, it was, it was like, nostalgic it was like a new nostalgia you know like I used to play piano when I was a kid and so I'm there's this sort of as I get older and get more jaded <laughs> it's really nice to feel to clumsily fumble through something and explore and like get better at something mm -hmm. also you know so mm -hmm. it's cool. And I think that's what this year has been about for lots of people. You know, it's kind of been like a chance to delve into something yeah, hopefully. new with like no real pressure because it's like, who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, just kind of because you want to, you know, and because it helps you through through the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm very much in like the gathering stage of my new record still, which I'm okay with. Like, it's yeah. like I'm not pressuring myself to try to finish um, finish the product, if if I can say that, um, until yeah. it's until it's finished. You know? Yeah. What I mean? Fuck yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. I mean why i mean why rush into creating mm -hmm. i feel like i was always on a trajectory of like i mean i look back sometimes at uh my last record when i say my last record like i mean better human a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and how quickly i turned around and put out a new record yeah um and the funny thing is, is during when I was making Searching for the Stranger, I wasn't rushing at all. Like yeah. I felt like there was this, I was just working the songs as they needed to be worked and I was taking my time. And basically in this, I was in the studio two or three times a month mm -hmm. working on a song and then moving on to the next one. Mm -hmm. But when I look back, it still feels like I can blink my eyes and put out two records. Yeah, yeah, it feels like you totally had like, <laughs> 
songwriting momentum yeah you know? which you gotta go with you gotta go when with that it. happens i mean you don't know but but now i'm like i just want to gather for yeah a while yeah you know yeah. squirrel yeah squirrel away well because after you make <laughs> after you do all the gathering you gotta like you said you know the product mm -hmm. is a thing yeah and that takes a whole uh that takes a whole other pile of energy. Yeah. I know it's kind of funny because I actually think I have like more than enough songs for a new record. But yeah. but um, I think before I've always had like just enough songs and then I've taken those to the studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this time I'm kind of, I don't know, I want to gather a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Are you also thinking about whether you're going to do it all yourself or go into the studio? Yeah. Um, it'll probably be a combination. Yeah. 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 Because it is a lot of work to do everything yourself. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it's nice to work with other people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk about that because your last record, All the Hours, I have left to tell you anything. Yeah. Um, you worked with Marcus Beckin, mm -hmm. and he produced it, and that was, from my memory, and tell me if I'm wrong, that was sort of the first time you let go of a lot of the um, power you had in production and sort of just gave it over to him as producer, uh, <sighs> to an extent. I don't really think that's the case. No. Like, I just think that it just ended up that I put him as producer um, and not my, because before I've always like put myself as co-producer. Yeah. And um, I don't know why I didn't do that on that one. Okay. Because, because I think, I think I was. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, obviously, like he had a lot of influence too. Sure. And uh, and he's uh, he's an incredible producer and musician, and um, and it was really really great to work with him. Yeah. 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 Good person. And we've actually written a song together in the pandemic, and I think we're gonna write a few more. Amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's great. Nice. Um, yeah, I have been doing a lot of like co writing sessions on Zoom. Yeah, which I had. Has a, been interesting. It's funny because <laughs> I had a conversation recently where I was talking about how we wrote a song together over email and how that was used to be like a funny story yeah. that people would co write a song via the internet. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, that's now, all you can fucking do. Yeah. So everybody's just writing over. It's not not funny or kitschy anymore. It's yeah. Just, have you been finding it? I kind of liked how we did it. Just like. Yeah. Because all my other ones have been like in person on Zoom. Yeah. In a way. Um, yeah. So for context. But we'll, I kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah give the context. When, when we wrote. Um, so we met. Uh, I had a gig at the Cameron House and Anna Ruddick was a played bass with both of our bands at the time and you were there and and we connected and you were in Whitehorse and I was here in Toronto and I had this song that I had started and I sent you the idea with a voice memo I think mm -hmm. and just a verse and a chorus yeah maybe just a verse over email yeah and we sent basically a verse and a voice memo back and forth every it was like every couple weeks or something yeah like very low-key I remember no, working on it like when I went to Nashville yeah it was definitely a, a drawn-out like two-month process yeah That's and then <laughs> this, which is which is but but it was now. really nice because we just like took our time and, and we didn't really know each other could, at like, all work on it separately yeah. which is like what both of our comfort zones were, yeah. right? And uh, and it became a beautiful song, yeah. And then we did a little tour together and got to play it for the first time yeah. together, which was yeah. very cool. Yeah. But now it's, yeah, so you've been able to write a lot of 
That was very, you know, special. We got to record that. That was on my last record, two records ago. Yeah. They're all my last records, but uh, yeah. <laughs> now you're getting to do a lot more Zoom. Yeah. Songwriting sessions. Yeah. And you're finding that they're being productive, like you're actually surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, like. Are you approaching it? Relaxing, too. Kind Are of. you approaching it in uh, any different way than you would approach, like, co-writing with somebody in person? No, but I think, like, like when I've gone to L.A. or whatever for co-writing, it's, it's so stressful because sure. you're in, like, a new environment. You've traveled. There's a time like, pressure. There's a time pressure. And you still have that time pressure on Zoom, which is kind of good because it's, like, we're gonna get it written in yeah. two hours on Zoom or whatever, but um, but I'm in my own studio. Yeah, I am like I can go and get a coffee in my own espresso machine. Yeah, and <laughs> my dog's there, and you know, there's just like another uh, comfort comfort level um, that's really nice, and like and now it's. It's great because it's bringing opportunities to like, like I'm in London, you know, yeah. like no one really wants to go to London in general. <laughs> and um, like someone from LA probably isn't gonna like come to my studio in London. Yeah. And, um, but I'm co-writing with people in LA. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of just like, leveling the playing field a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Or do you think any of those songs are going to make it on your next record? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. I'm trying to challenge myself to write songs for other people too. Cool. So like I'm having sessions with like other people who want new songs for their records, which is which yeah. is fun. Is that a hope for yours also to be a songwriter for other people to just create? I think so. I think like I'm just someone who constantly like puts myself into uncomfortable situations and yeah. new things. And um, so I'm just like, I'll, I'll just do it and see. And, yeah. you know, we'll see if it if it's turns I, into something. or Yeah, not, but. I also like I always thought that I would do that. I sometimes when I first started writing songs thought that I shouldn't be a performer and that I should just write songs for other people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I still think that. Like there are a few songs I've written that I... Why can't you do both? Well, you can. Well, that's what I'm yeah. learning. Yeah. There have been songs on my records where I've heard other people's voices and I've, you know, almost uh, given it to them. You can do both. Yeah. We shall do both. Also, like... You can be a songwriter when you're like 75. Yeah, if um, I live that long. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're still young, Ben. Yeah, I know. <laughs> still a pup, still a baby. Yeah. Well, when do you think we might expect to hear some, some new songs? Either from this um, new record or, or something that you're working on? I actually have one song um, that's finished that I'm just sending to mastering now. Um, that I didn't produce it, but uh, it was one of the co-writing sessions, yeah. and um, and it was just like a really meditative session where we would both just like work on our thing separately, wow. but we like. We didn't even do it on Zoom. We did it on FaceTime, and, and like we'd mute each other, and and then like work on our own part of it. So I was mostly working on the lyrics and melody, yeah. and he was working on the beat, and uh, and then we just put it together, and uh, and it's like it's not perfect, mm -hmm. but we both really love it. So we just decided we're gonna put it out, yeah, and. Uh, and not fuss with it too much, you know? Just kind of let it be what it is, which, nice. is, which is something I, I don't often do, but. Yeah. Yeah. How does that, how does that feel? 
just leaving, <sighs> letting a song be. It feels good. Yeah. Yeah, it feels really good. Because it feels like it just, it has the right feeling that I wanted it to have and that he wanted it to have. Yeah. So, um, and it feels like a real like collaboration. And, uh, and uh, we're just gonna let it be that. Yeah, know? nice. Yeah. I'm sending it to mastering this week and then we'll see what happens. Amazing. <laughs> I don't want to keep you too much longer. We could talk <laughs> for, <laughs> for hours and for hours, and hours <laughs> as we yeah. have in the past. But this was uh, super special. I was so happy to have you here. Thank you for having and to me. To see you um, and to sing with you. I, I I hope that we can. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we can write songs together and two or more together and just be able to hang out. Yeah, one more time, at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming and... Thanks for having me. It's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Peace. Peace out. <laughs> Peace. Peace.